This goes out to all the racist white people that always tell me to go back to my country. Okay, fine. Just tell me where your ancestors took my ancestors from and pay for the plane ticket back home and I will gladly go back to the motherland. But while I'm on the plane, make sure you're packing your bags as well. Or did you forget that your people were colonizers? This isn't your country either. This is the country of the indigenous people. You know, the people who gave you nothing but generosity, helped you figure out how to work the land just to be murdered and pushed to a small plot of land that is their only sacred land left for their tribe? just to be threatened years later for oil pipelining yeah we didn't forget not to mention all of their missing women that no one is talking about nor looking for the disrespect just to solely turn around and see you guys wearing their culture as costumes on halloween their culture is not nothing to play with honey you do not get to try it on just to disrespect them in their own land so put some respect on their name this is their country how about you go back to yours sweetie Is that my cousin over there? Let me wave at him and see if he notices. Look over there, Timothy. It's a native. He's blessing the land. Well, gosh dang it, Timothy. Take off your dang hat. Show some respect. This is such an honor. Nah, that's not even him. A lot of people think this is the Eskimo kiss. <laughs> but we wanted to show you the real Inuit kiss and it's called Kunik. Usually it's done with a lot of emotion. You wanna show? Like that. <laughs> the more love you have for a person, the more stronger that you do it. Like you take their head and you're like <laughs> <laughs> Her eyes are blue, yours are brown, hers represents the ocean, yours represents the ground. You've always hated your eyes and wish that they were blue, but your eyes have a tint of gold so rare it must not be true. So yes, her eyes are blue and yes, your eyes are brown, but your eyes hold the riches that are buried in the ground. Her eyes carry storms and rage like the sea. Your eyes carry earthquakes that bring mountains to their knees. Maybe her eyes are blue. But your eyes reign queen because they hold the purest riches the world has ever seen. If your inclusive indigenous campaigns and conversations don't also include those who identify as Afro-Indigenous, they are not inclusive. We are so often left out of the loop. It is not a coincidence. It is not an oversight. It is colorist and it is racist. Being mixed does not and should not invalidate one's lineage or standing within the indigenous community. Include all indigenous peoples, not just those who fit the European beauty standard, or don't call your work inclusive at all. If you're an ally to the native community, you've probably heard of MMIW or MMIWG2S, but what does that stand for and why is it important? MMIWG2S stands for Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women, Girls, and Two-Spirit People. This social movement is to raise awareness of the fact that native women are 10 times more likely compared to the national average to be murdered. Not to mention, four out of five native women experience violence in their lifetime. Symbols that we use to raise awareness include red, red handprint, 
or a tiny red dress. Today I'm wearing tiny red dress earrings from Christine Canbead's Etsy. A portion of her proceeds goes towards supporting MMIW's families. Please consider supporting businesses which donate towards MMIW. This social movement goes beyond the Native community. Anyone who recognizes the worth of indigenous people must take time to educate themselves and spread awareness. Please click the link in my bio if you want to buy these earrings, learn facts about missing and murdered indigenous women, or watch a documentary. Please ask questions in the comments after looking at those resources. Racist comments will be deleted. Over and over and over again, I see you fooling with him. Over and over and over again, I see you DMing him. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, we are here, Yahweh, oh, 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 hey, in recognition of Native American Heritage Month, I would like to encourage you all to learn whose ancestral homelands you currently reside on. And to do this, you can go to native-land.ca. Once you're there, you can type in your hometown and it'll give you a list of tribes who traditionally lived in those areas. If you want to dive in a little further, you can also adjust the treaties toggle. And from there, it'll give you an opportunity to look into the treaties that were signed with those tribes and the United States government. And with that, I hope you have a wonderful day. But anyways, as a Mexican myself and most Mexicans, I was shocked when I found this out. Because you know, I always thought she was one of us. But nonetheless, Dora is Native American. She's indigenous. Something, you know, when I was colonized, I also didn't know. But now, I realized it. But anyways, yeah, I guess she's um from a Peruvian background. In the movie, they had to learn the lines from that indigenous language. At least spoken in Latin America. So I guess, you know, her identity would be Pan-Latin. But yeah, the more you know, I just wanted to share that.
if your inclusive indigenous campaigns and conversations don't also include those who identify as Afro-Indigenous, they are not inclusive. We are so often left out of the loop. It is not a coincidence. It is not an oversight. It is colorist and it is racist. Being mixed does not and should not invalidate one's lineage or standing within the indigenous community. Include all indigenous peoples, not just those who fit the European beauty standard, or don't call your work inclusive at all. What up, it's Carla Flores, and today we are gonna interrogate some people with some questions. All right, so I found my first lucky contestant, and your name is? Andrew. Andrew, all right, Andrew, so I got some questions for you. Right, sure. How many tribes are in San Diego County? Oh God, We're like six? Six, wrong, it's 18. Okay, can you name at least one tribe or local reservation? God, I like moved here a year ago, I have no clue. Have you heard of any at least around here? Um, I heard of one and it was uh, during the um, ceremony they had for new students. What was the name of it? I can't remember. Like, Not one? No. Can you name at least one native tribe in general? Uh, Doesn't have to be from this state. Cherokee. Okay, alright, that's awesome, <laughs> good enough. Alright, so now I am here with... Cole. Cole, and I'm going to ask Cole some questions. Do you know how many tribes are in San Diego County? Seven. Seven? Wrong. It's 18. Can you name at least one tribe or reservation? Ooh, um... I can't. No? Okay, it's okay. We'll move on to the next person. Thank you, Cole, for your time. All right, so now I am here with... Jaden. Chris. Chris. I'm here with Jaden and Chris. I'm going to ask them some questions. Do you guys know how many local tribes there are in San Diego County? No. Lucky guess. Lucky guess. Three. Three? Wait, wait, San Diego? San Diego County. Oh, I think oh. like 20. 20? 20, bro. Hey, you guys are close. It's 18. I'm going to say that's pretty close. Okay. Can you name at least one of them? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't. At least one tribe or reservation? Just one. Just one. Dude, Barona's on a tribe, right? That is a tribe. That's, that's a, a reservation. Tribe? It's, a, it's a reservation, yeah. yeah. Sir. Gambling life. All right. All right. Well, I appreciate your guys' time. Thank you for answering our questions. All right, so now I am with uh, Heatherly, Megan, Megan. Awesome, and I'm gonna ask them a question. How many tribes are in San Diego County? Uh, oh God. Any lucky guess? Any guess? Four. Four. Ten. Ten. Thirteen. Thirteen. She's the closest. It is eighteen. Eighteen tribes. Eighteen. So can you name any local reservations or tribes? Just, just one. I learned about it the first day at school and then it just went right out my head. <laughs> None? I can't pronounce them. I've done the what land are you on, but I can never remember. I can't pronounce them. It's okay, it's okay. This is a good learning opportunity. So right now we are on the Luceno Paiquicham land. Is that, can you guys remember that, Luceno? Luceno. All right, I just want you guys to learn something today, all right? Have a good day. Thank you. All right, that's the end of this video. I just want to say thank you, and this is the club that we're trying to get stuff done. All right, peace out. This is a Jalagi story about a time when half of the world was bright with the sun, and the other half was dark. The animals that lived on the dark half of the world were tired of living in the cold and in the dark. And then one day, there was a giant thunderstorm, and lightning struck the earth and started a fire on this big, beautiful tree, so big they can see it from the dark half of the world. The animals on the dark side thought that if they can bring some of that fire over, they could have some warmth. So they took turns trying. Then a tiny little spider was like, let me try it. He can grab all that he can carry, which ended up just being a little piece of ember. And he finally made it over, and they got the ember off of his back and started fire with it. And then the dark side of the earth now had light and warmth and the little black spider had a mark, a little tiny red mark from the, the ember. Anyways, we know it as a black widow. If your inclusive indigenous campaigns and conversations don't also include those who identify as Afro-Indigenous, they are not inclusive. We are so often left out of the loop. It is not a coincidence. It is not an oversight, it is colorist, and it is racist. Being mixed does not and should not invalidate one's lineage or standing within the indigenous community. Include all indigenous peoples, not just those who fit the European beauty standard, or don't call your work inclusive at all.